Hello everyone, this is Keith here, and today I'm going to be playing Odd World New and Tasty, which is of course a remake of the original Odd World Apes Odyssey for the PlayStation 1. Uh, I am playing Odd World New and Tasty on my Linux machine, uh, and I haven't noticed any technical issues. Uh, I use Arch Linux uh, and a NVIDIA GTX 970 with the latest graphics drivers. The game does use Unity, uh, so it is of course multi-platform and does run pretty well. And should run on about any setup. Uh, if you go to settings here, as you can see, they've actually faithfully recreated the uh, original menu from Odd World, which I actually like. Gives it a bit more personality, you know. One annoying thing is I'm playing with a Steam controller, and this game works well for the Steam controller. But one very annoying thing is, in order for your controller to actually be detected and work, you have to go to Options menu here, and under the Control Options, change your input method uh, to controller. Because if you don't have it set to controller, uh, moving your controller does not work. So that's one thing I would like to point out. Uh, weirdly enough, even with the input method set to controller, I still seem to use my keyboard. So I'm not sure why I have to enable that option. But whatever. You can go in and rebind all your keys, which is really nice. Uh, I can't uh, rebind my controller layout, but I think that is because of um, uh, my controller that I am using. You know, I am using this new controller, so I can just you know rebind it. Uh, the steam overlay and of course you have button to run which I actually like because instead of you know you're mov you moving your stick to a certain dead zone that causing it to run instead you can just have it to where you press a button and it runs I actually prefer that this game also does have co-op I haven't really uh, looked into co-op so I'm not sure how that works but it is uh, neat that they have that and of course under graphics you have uh, all kinds of uh, graphical settings this game does look quite nice I have everything turned up and I haven't uh, really noticed any performance issues uh, you can also trust, uh, adjust gamma, you know, depending on your uh, screen. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, audio is just a bunch of, audio options is just a bunch of sliders. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go yep. back to continue game. Actually, I'm going to start, I'm going to go to chapter select, and I think I'm going to start from, yeah, I think I'm going I'm to start from chapter one, because I think that gives me the, uh, it's a better place to start off from. Go ahead and skip the starting movie here. So this is uh, Odd World Apes Odyssey. If you've never played a Odd World game before, uh, it's, it's essentially a uh, puzzle platformer, a uh, pretty unique one too. I've never really played a game with uh, puzzle mecha uh, mechanics quite like this game, and that really adds to the charm of it. It's a super unique uh, and enjoyable game. If you've never played a game like this, I definitely recommend giving it a shot. And the new and tasty remake, as you can see, just it looks really good actually. It's a very uh, you know, beautiful looking game in my opinion. I did notice a bug here where if you look at those uh, screens right there, those white bars, that's actually supposed to be text that uh, is sort of a tutorial for the player. It sometimes bug out, bugs out, I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, it's a sort of unfortunate bug, but it's not a, a game breaker. Okay, I gotta remember my controls here. Yeah, this game does work with the Xbox. This game did work with my Xbox 360 controller and my Steam controller. I detected them both. Uh, without any issue. I do prefer playing this game with a controller. I do feel like it's just uh, how the game was meant to be played. You have this directory here which just sort of shows you a map of everything. Uh, so anyway, yeah, this is the uh, game here. And uh, the whole point of the game is you play this Madokin. I believe that's what they call Madokins or Madokos. I'm not entirely sure what the race is called. Uh, but essentially you play as, you know, this Madokin named Abe. And uh, oh, that's actually a really nice lighting effect. I didn't notice that before. That looks really nice. The shadows there are actually pretty smooth. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So you're sort of this uh, slave worker at this meat uh, facility. Uh, and you just sort of wax floors. And then one day you stumble upon, uh, you know, your boss is talking about actually, you know, taking all the other Madokins that work at this factory and, uh, you know, chomping them up and making them into snacks. So it's your job as Abe to sort of go around the uh, facility and free your fellow Madokins. Now this is actually one of the first uh, areas where you actually get a save Madokin. This is sort of a beginner's trap because if you pull that switch it uh, kills him. But yeah, anyway, when you run into a fellow Madokin, uh, you just sort of, you have different uh, like uh, things you can say. Like for instance, I say hello and that's how you get their attention and then you can tell them to follow you. And then, you know, you can take them to a portal where you can rescue them. So we have an enemy here. What I'm going to need to do is, um, 
Let's check it. Hit the switch without waking him up. Yeah, there we go. We have another one down here, so I just say hello to him. And then you know when you when you have Madokins and you want to rescue them, you come up to these portals and then you do a, a chant, and they run through. And then there you go, you've uh, rescued them. So very simple concept, uh, but very well executed. You know later in the games you'll have to say uh, different dialogue options and uh, you know perform more complex puzzles in order to get to the Madokins to rescue. And tell this one, tell this guy to follow me. And the way you talk to people is uh, with the D-pad. And you have other things you could do, like for instance, you could fart. Uh, let's see if I can remember how to fart. I believe it's... Uh, let me see, I gotta remember my key bindings here. I believe it is... I think it's... Hmm. I'm actually having trouble remembering it uh, right now. That's alright. <laughs> yeah, you have also things like you can, you know, fart, which you may have to do with certain people. Uh, to sort of... There's just a variety of things to do. And you see you have this little scoreboard here that comes up every now and again whenever you rescue people. It's a neat little thing just to sort of show you your progress. You see, yeah, you have really basic uh, elements, but, you know, they work well. Like you can, of course, you can walk, you know, sneak, I mean, so that way you don't uh, wake people up and then you can run if you need to get to areas quickly. And you can also duck by pressing down and roll, which you do need to do sometimes. You can also, you know, go into um, run to roll like that. There are a few situations where that comes in handy. There it is. There's the uh, alt functions right there. So yeah, just a bunch of silly things you can do to get people's attention and uh, sort of get them to trust you and lighten up to you. Plus that guy is sleeping right there, so what I'm going to do is tell these guys to wait and jump up. Oh, whoa, almost jumped right into that. And he will shoot through that electric portal, if I'm not mistaken, so we gotta go slow. Okay. So, let's see. okay, so that drops them down there. So, uh, you have these bottle caps you can throw, and I'm going to use that to distract them. Hopefully, they'll both, uh, one of them will get on that area, and I can hit the switch, which will drop them. Okay, there's one. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty dumb. They'll, uh, you know, even though he just saw that happen to his companion, he's probably still going to walk over there as well. Oh, got to do it right so the bottle cap lands on it. Shit. Hmm? No? What? What happened? There we go. <laughs> so yeah, a pretty simple puzzle game, uh, especially very early on. But uh, one thing that makes this game so great and, you know, what makes it such a, a timeless classic is, um, you know, each area is really uh, distinct from each other and, you know, each screen gives you uh, new ways to solve a puzzle and new interesting puzzles to solve. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely, you know, uh, got lots of variety. And they also introduce constant uh, fresh elements to sort of spice things up. And, uh, you know, in my opinion, that's what you really need for a good uh, puzzle game is to keep changing things. Like this area, for instance, see there's a, uh, an opponent in the background there. And if I sort of go into view, he'll actually shoot at me. So, you know, and I gotta save this Madokin here, so I gotta sort of find a way to do this. Uh, quickly and not get any of us murdered. Ooh. Oh, that's a really bad idea. <laughs> so I didn't do that well. Uh, but I didn't die, so that's one thing. And then you notice know, another new addition to the screen is you have these uh, the smoke you can step into, which obscures you. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to go up here. Oh. Okay, yeah, he can hear me, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to throw this uh, quarter over here, make him look the other way, and then just... There we go. Now, I'm going to wait for him to circle back around and pull this lever. And baboosh!
So yeah, as you can see, uh, really fun game, especially from the start of it. You know, it's very basic and simple, and it, the game does a, uh, a good job of uh, introducing you to mechanics and just showing you how everything uh, works. And that's part of why the game's just so fun, you know, is it, uh, it has this really good progression about it. Oh, these landmines are really annoying. I can't seem to get these right. You're supposed to uh, touch them when they're green, and that disarms them. Uh, but it can be a little uh, annoying. <laughs> yeah, it takes really precise timing to do those. I've never been good at them. Uh, I'm going to spend all day here if, if I keep doing that. I'm just going to blow myself up 50 times. Get these guys to follow me. Let's see if I... I'm just going to roll for a little bit. I always find this fun. So I'm going to tell them to wait here. You actually have to disarm that uh, bomb and take them to the other portal in order to get those guys to uh, go or to rescue them. I'm going to turn this grinder there off. Uh, and hopefully I can trigger him to walk under there. This actually takes a little bit of uh, precise timing. But you can get him to get mulched by this thing. Come on. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky. Keep this area. There you go. Yeah, so there you go. That's Oddworld's uh, Abe Odyssey. Uh, and if you ever need help with the game speak, you can come into the menu here and, you know, mess around with the buttons and, uh, you know, figure everything out and figure out how uh, to do all the talking commands and stuff. Plus, just get an overview of what you can do as well. And you can also, of course, change settings from the pause menu and all that. So, yeah, that's uh, Oddworld, uh, new and tasty. A, in my opinion, a very good remake of... Uh, Abe's Odyssey, and also a great new addition to the uh, franchise. I think they really did a good job with this remake, both visually and gameplay-wise. They were very faithful with the recreation of the game. And if you're a fan of platforming games or puzzle games, uh, or you've just never played an Oddworld game, I totally recommend this game. It's such a unique uh, game that was sort of lost in the obscurities of time for a little bit. I mean, it did have sort of a cult following, but I, you never really got uh, that many good Abe Oddworld games. Um, so yeah, this is definitely a great game. Highly recommend it. Uh, Keith signing out.